Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Stacy, and today is all about bringing your house plants in 101. And I am so happy because I have Darlene here with me today and she is our greenhouse manager and total house plant guru. So it takes a ton of pressure off of me. Thank you so much for coming, for coming to this video and for helping me with this topic. No problem, always happy to help Stacy. I have so many questions for you and I know just as customers come in every day, they ask you this question all the time. I have my house plants outside. What the heck do I do to bring them inside? So the number one thing that I wanna ask you is about temperature. I always hear you talking to customers about when to bring your house plants in based on temperature. Can you tell me what you think is the temperature that we need to be paying the most attention to? When it's consistently between 45 to 50 degrees, you wanna bring it in. And that's a nighttime temperature. Okay, 45 to 50 consistent nighttime temps. All right, so people are gonna say, what if we have one night that is 45 to 50 degrees? Do we have to run home from work and like scramble to bring all our house plants in? No, you could bring it in just overnight okay. or even cover it with a sheet if it's not gonna be too, too cold. All right, so if we have like one or two nights, 45 to 50 degrees at night, we can just maybe tuck it in at night and bring it back out during the day, right? If it's a huge plant and someone just can't carry it inside, they could cover it with something cotton, like a sheet. Yep. An old bed sheet. Okay. But ideally, is it good just to rush our plants inside or should we be acclimating them if we have time to do that? Ideally, if you have time, if the time's on our side, then you would want to acclimate them by bringing them closer to the house okay. underneath like an eave, underneath a porch, something like that. Okay. So, Celine, I have two huge ferns at home that I want to save, unlike last year, which I didn't do a great job with. So they are so big that I cannot bring them in at night. So if the temperatures are like four to five days of 45 to 50 degrees, then I need to really be bringing them in though, right? Yes. Um, okay. I would check on apps. The apps are really good. It tells the nighttime temperatures as well as hourly. Okay. So um, if you're looking, now we go at eight to 10 days out. Yeah. Eight to 10 days out and most of those days are colder temperatures yeah it's time to think all about right bringing bring them in because I love these ferns and I don't want to do what I did last year so all right now I have to talk about bugs a lot of times when we bring house plants in they look fine they look great but then all of a sudden in like January or February people come in and say they were fine why do I have aphids all over them or why do I have white flies or mealybug or scale would you say those are the most common those are the most common right the ones that we get asked for the most well, the problem is guys, these little tiny critters often lay their eggs on the plants outside. You cannot see them. So we really should be proactive. And what I normally recommend, both Darlene and I, we recommend an oil spray. You could use neem or horticultural oil. And what you wanna do before you bring these plants inside is coat them from top to bottom. Leaves, stems, branches, everything. That'll really help cut down on any problems you might have inside later. The other thing that Darlene has is her favorite product. Darlene, can you show us what you tell everybody to use? I like using these proactive. They're a little systemic tablet. I call them like an antibiotic for your plant. Um, it helps get the medicine into the plant, into the soil, up through the roots, um, and takes care of any larvae that's, that's in the soil. Okay, so that's actually really good. The reason that she loves these so much is because they last for two months in the plants, guys. So they really are a great way to protect your plants through that whole winter season inside the house. And it makes a lot less work for you. You just put these little antibiotics, as Darlene calls them, into the soil, and then they work their magic through the whole system of the plant. One other little thing, if you wanna be super, super thorough, is you could use diatomaceous earth. We talk about this as an organic product. You put it on the soil, and what this does is it actually helps get rid of some of those crawly, creepy critters. So like ants and mealybugs and things like that, that aren't really a problem to the plant, but they're a nuisance inside the house. Okay, the other thing that people always ask about is when is the last time I should fertilize my plants? What is that, what is it that you always say to people? When, you, when you're bringing them in, so somewhere between October and November. Okay, so, so you don't really do full fertilization all winter long for your house plants? No, I stop um, in October and November and then I don't start up again until March. Okay, so that's really good guys. Our plants they need to rest just like us they're going into like a mini hibernation in the winter time so you don't want to overfeed them 
What fertilizer do you normally recommend? I normally recommend the slow release. Um, it's my favorite. It's super easy. You don't have to think about it. Just a handful or there is a measuring scoop in here into your plant and it lasts two to three months. So it works really well. Um, lasts to get you through those winter months when you're not really fertilizing. It just slowly releases a little bit. So that's smart. So you guys, you give it this really great dose when you bring it in but then it slowly feeds just enough to keep the plants really happy and healthy through the whole winter season. Some of you might ask, can you use liquids? You can, but like Darlene was sort of saying, is that the, what the liquids do is they give a quick flush of fertilizer, and then there's really nothing left in the plant for the rest of that winter season. However, once you get back to March, like Darlene is talking about, and they all start to actively grow again, go crazy, use the slow release and the liquid fertilizers, in combination and then that's the best for your house plants okay so we've talked about temperature which is you said 45 to 50 consistently at night 45 to 50 consistently at night so important guys don't do like i did last year and leave them out too long bring them inside when those when those temperatures hit check your phone apps the other thing we talked about was acclimating them slowly okay once you bring them inside i have one other question um if it's a brightly lit bright light plant it needs to be in the brightest space obviously Correct. right a nice sunny window okay so have you noticed a difference this i know this sounds silly but if you wash your windows mm -hmm. huge difference yeah like you guys you wouldn't believe it but if you actually clean your windows where your plants are going to be going you would not believe how much more sunlight it lets in because outside plants will never get as much sun inside as they do outside not even in the sunniest window yeah so all right so we've got this darlene thank you so much i think this is helpful for everybody it's really helpful for me um i hopefully we were clear so guys getting that time look at your apps it's getting time to start bringing in those beautiful house plants and enjoy them all winter long in your home thanks a bunch see you next time